Okay, so when I left off of Cask of Amontillado, he had uh, pretty much gotten Fortunato to come with him to check out uh, the validity of his Amontillado. And he made sure that his uh, attendants were not at home because he did not want witnesses. So at that point, what ends up happening is he goes to, um, he takes Fortunato with him. And the whole time that he's with Fortunato, he keeps telling him things like, hey, you know what, I know that you're sick. And I really don't want to put you out. And so you're just being too nice. I don't want to take advantage of you. And by the way, this Lucrece guy, you know, I can really get him to do that. And as we can see, Lucrece is somebody that just triggers Fortunato. And Fortunato is just like, no, man, that guy isn't going to help you. He doesn't know anything from, you know, he, he can't tell a lot of from Cherry. So, yeah, we need to go. Like, we need to go into your catacombs and I need to check out of this uh, Montiato story. So at this point, uh, he's really starting to cough a lot because the niter inside the uh it's like this mineral that really exacerbates your sickness um the niter in the cat uh the catacombs is really starting to affect him and he's coughing a lot and that's what he's doing right here in this part right here is he's coughing and you know uh montresor is really um uh, milking it saying you know my poor friend uh, i'm just so sorry that you have to go through this and fortunato is like hey man, it's nothing don't worry about it and he's just like, you know, he keeps telling him, hey, you know what, we'll go back, man. You know, you are rich, respected, admired, beloved, and you are happy as I once was. You are a man to be missed. For me, it is no matter. Now, what I honestly believe about this particular thing, we don't know exactly what Fortunato did to Montresor to make him, like, go to this length and, and to be personally offended. But when I read this, I kind of have a feeling that this is what he was doing. He was making Montresor feel like he wasn't a very good person, like he wasn't very popular, um, that you know, and that he was so much better than him. So I kind of see this right here as maybe the possible motive. And at this point, you know, Montre uh, Fortunato was like, no, 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 don't worry about it. You know, my cough is nothing. Don't worry. And then he says this, it will not kill me. I shall not die of a cough. Now, at this point, you have to be, you know, kind of uh, loving this because this is dramatic irony. He is saying, you know what? It's not the cough that's going to kill me. And then I love what Montresor says here. He's just like, yeah, true, true. You're absolutely right because I'm going to kill myself. I'm not going to let this cough do it. So anyway, um, as they keep going, you know, uh, uh, Fortunato is still drunk and um, they get to the catacombs and he, you know, he kind of proposes a toast and says, hey, I drink to those buried around us. And Montresor says, and I drink to your long life. So again, dramatic irony, verbal irony, sarcasm, all of it's right there. He's basically saying, you know what, I'm going to drink to your long life and I'm darn well know that I'm not going to give you a longer life than we have right now. So anyway, he goes back into the vaults and um, when they get into the vaults, he sees uh, the crest, the family crest of Montresor. And he asks, hey, Montresor, what's this family crest about? And he says, well, as you can see, it's a large human foot that crushes a serpent and the serpent has his fangs embedded in the heel. And he says, and what's the motto? And he says, Nemo me impune la set, which means nobody hurts me without uh, and gets away with it. That's pretty much like the family creed. And, you know, Fortunato was like, well, that's a pretty good creed. I, I, I totally appreciate that. So anyway, they keep going and they keep uh, making their way into the vaults. And um, as they're going into the vaults in this part right here, he says, um, yeah. He says, I broke and reached him a flagon de gras. He emptied it at health, or excuse me, at breath. His eyes flashed fierce with light. He laughed and threw the bottle upwards and with a gesticulation that I did not understand. So he drinks uh, some of this wine and he throws it up in the air in a particular way that's different than other people usually do. And Montresor says, I looked at him with surprise and he did it again. And when he looked at me, he said, you don't know what I'm like. He says, you don't comprehend. You don't know what I'm doing. And Montresor said, no, I don't. And then he says, well, then you're not of the brotherhood. And Montresor is like, what are you talking about? And he says, you are not one of the Masons. Now, the Masons were these skilled group of stone and bricklayers. And so he's telling him, you're not one of the Masons. You're not one of us. And Montresor is like, yes, I am. And he's like, you? impossible a mason so this is another example of maybe how fortunato was being very um, exclusive and not letting him in and i think that that's another reason that he did that 
so anyway, he keeps going. And at this point, he actually reaches the catacombs. He goes inside where he thinks the uh, Amontillado is going to be, but it's actually this little bitty wall. And Montresor starts building, like he ties him to the, uh, to the ground. And this guy can't get out. And it's the perfect size for a person to be entombed or encrypted. And he basically tells uh, Fortunato, he says, yeah, he says, you know what? You stay right there. And then he starts building this brick wall. And uh, and at this point, you know, Fortunato has no idea what he's doing. He's just like, you know, what are you doing? And you know what? This is going to be a big laugh, you know? So this is, you know, it's enough of the gag. And Montresor is like, no, no, I'm going to keep doing this. And here's what's happening. He's bricking him up in this wall. And when he's bricking him up, and Fortunato starts to realize that he is going to be entombed in, behind this wall. He starts screaming and Montresor starts screaming back at him, but louder than him. And, you know, it really kind of shows like this descent into madness that this uh, revenge is starting to have over uh, Montresor. So anyway, um, he talks about, you know, uh, the fifth and the sixth tier, the wall now nearly upon the level of my breast. I again paused. At one point, he says, I hesitated. I trembled. So he's kind of like having second thoughts, but then he's kind of over it. And uh, at this point, he realizes that, you know what, I can probably get away with this. And at this point, Fortunato is like desperate. And so, of course, Fortunato evokes God. And he's just like, for the love of God, Montresor. And, you know, it's kind of one of those situations where it's like, you know, uh, you really start to evoke God when you realize that things are really serious and you get desperate. Um, you know, I mean, like imagine the atheist who's like, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. And then all of a sudden something happens to their kids and needs to have life saving surgery. And at this point, you know, I'm going to go to that chapel and I'm going to pray just in case. So at this point, he's just like, for the love of God, Montresor. And Montresor says, yes, for the love of God. So at this point, it's kind of like Montresor saying, you know what? You're such a person that even God's on my side, even God agrees with what I'm doing. And so anyway, uh, he tombs him up and he hears Fortunato screaming or he, you know, starts screaming at Fortunato. He can't hear Fortunato. And it says, no answer. I thrust my torch to the remaining aperture and let it fall within. There came forth only a jingling of bells. My heart grew sick. And at this point, you're just like, oh, his heart grew sick. Well, he felt bad. And it's like, no, nah, but it was just a dampness of the catacombs. It wasn't because I killed this guy. So at this point, what you have to wonder, you know, in the very last line is in Pache Reeves spot, which means um, in P, uh, rest in peace. So at this point, you know, we have to realize that we're inside the mind of a murderer. And we are also uh, seeing a theme that revolves around be careful who you uh, or how you treat people and uh, be careful how you let people treat you. So anyway, uh, this was the Cask of Amontillado. I hope you enjoyed it, and um, just make sure that you remember it well enough to maybe implement it into some of your future essays.